there are three explanations for what's going on. The first is that the SEC was just set up to be feeble. It's underfunded, it lacks criminal powers, it can take on the occasional social menace like Martha Stewart, but not a couple dozen hedge funds running trillions of dollars. It was set up to assuage public concern, but not really address it. The second explanation is the problem of dispersed costs and concentrated benefits. The feebleness of the regulatory regime imposes costs on Americans who save and it provides a benefit to people who live in Manhattan. The third explanation is the one I proposed earlier, that is fear of systemic failure. They understand that if they wake up tomorrow and decide to force the large pre-existing open positions at the DTCC and the X clearing system to be bought in, the volatility would vapor lock the system. Uh, the financial press expect nothing from them. Uh, my experience of reporters has actually been generally positive. Most, especially local reporters, tend to be honest and seem to want to honestly get their head around stories and understand them and do a good job. And the financial press outside of Wall Street, the, the Financial Times and the Investors Business Daily, somehow, you know, they're, they seem good and honest, but the Wall Street financial press can just totally be written off. They're like the pre-Watergate Washington, D.C. press corps who had gotten so chummy with the White House that you know, they overlooked all kinds of things going on, didn't write about it until these two young guys, Woodward and Bernstein, showed up and they weren't bought into the system, so they blew the lid off things. The the, the Wall Street press corps is a non-event. It's just they've become the the pawns of powerful hedge funds and, and you can assume you can ignore them for this scandal. This may be a perfect crime. The crime's extensive, yet victims don't know they're being victimized often and even if they figure it out, it's difficult to explain. Few will believe them. Wall Street has an interest in downplaying it. Their mouthpiece, the Wall Street Press, will just trump at a party line that says you should focus on your business. If you only ran a better liquor store, no, maybe no one would rob it, which is, of course, a non sequitur, but they parrot it endlessly. The cop on the beat would grandfather past crime, downplay current crime, and refuse disclosing information. So this could be the perfect crime. If you get into this issue, you're going to wrestle with pigs, so you should anticipate their arguments. They're going to tell you that these are crummy companies that the comp public should not invest in anyway. To that, just say, of course, fine, let's have a list of companies that don't get legal protection. Oh, wait, we already do. It's called the break show threshold list. Or they say, uh, these crummy companies should just focus on their business and not their stock. The answer to that is, what part of illegal don't you understand? You can counter with questions of your own. You'll only get slop in return, but you can might as well ask, should the SEC permit illegal failures? And if not, why they grandfather them? And why can't they force settlement? Why won't they disclose the FTDs every night? Somebody has to know how many there are. And if it's such a, uh, you know, for them to be on the reg show threshold list, if it's such a, so fanciful to think this is a big problem, just disclose the size of the failures by a company. Ask how can investors know whether they're buying real shares or just getting some hedge funds IOUs when they buy in the market. And in every recent Wall Street scandal, the tenacity of the state regulators embarrass the SEC. The analyst payola scandal, the mutual fund late trading scandal. It's, is it going to happen again here? My guess is yes. There are a few things you can do to help. First, remember the mantra, settle the trades and disclose the fails. Second, Stay informed at the sanity check, which is a central station for this issue. New FOIA requests get deposited there and good blogs and articles. Third, spread the word. There have been over 150,000 downloads of this presentation already. If you enjoyed it, send it out to a few friends. Send links and letters to the press. Don't bother with the Wall Street press. They're not going to do anything, obviously. It's not going to be broken there. Uh, it's going to be broken in Chicago or Seattle or Kansas City or somewhere. Write the regulators. At the sanity check, you can get the email addresses of the SEC commissioners. Hit them with letters. Um, lastly, politicians. There's a link here to congressmerge.com. It's a great site. It lets you uh, drop letters very quickly to your representatives and senators. It doesn't even cost a stamp. Uh, I'll mention that politicians are most concerned about jobs. So point out to them the cost of this problem, not just for 
small entrepreneurial companies, but for folks like Delta and General Motors, they are under this kind of attack. They will go under. Their pension li liabilities are going to shift to American taxpayers if we don't do something. Who knows if they would make it or not if their stock were not being counterfeited. So contact politicians. In my view, they're going to get this before the regulators get it, and the SEC is going to be embarrassed when Congress and some other folks in D.C. move first. question always to ask is, why is the SEC grandfathering and hiding the FTDs? Why do they fear volatility from large pre-existing open positions? And how long will they dither as thousands of companies are harmed and countless American jobs are lost?